Here we are. Good morning. The sun is shining. It's a cold start to the day. Let's begin. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. with you. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ died to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil and confess our sins in penitence and faith. And so we say, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Risen Christ for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred, open the doors of our hearts that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace to the praise of God the Father. Amen. Amen. So we come to our first reading. The reading is from Acts 5, 27 to 33. They brought the apostles to the Sanhedrin. The high priest questioned them. We gave you clear orders not to teach in Jesus' name, he said, but you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching. You want to make us guilty of this man's death. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God instead of people. You had Jesus killed by nailing him to a cross, but the God of our people raised Jesus from the dead. Now Jesus is Prince and Saviour. God has proved this by giving Jesus a place of honour with him. He did it to turn Israel away from their sins and forgive them. We are telling people about these things, and so is the Holy Spirit. God has given the Spirit to those who obey him. When the leaders heard this, they became very angry. They wanted to put the apostles to death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus said, All who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The one who comes from above is above everything. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks like someone from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above everything. He is a witness to that which he has seen and heard. 
for no one accepts what he says. Anyone who has accepted it has said, yes, God is truthful. The one whom God has sent speaks God's words. That's because God gives the Holy Spirit without limit. The Father loves the Son and has put everything into his hands. Anyone who believes in the Son has eternal life. Anyone who does not believe in the Son will not have life. God's anger remains upon them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Father, we thank you for Christ risen. We thank you for his death and his sacrifice for us. Touch us now by his spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, this is a real problem, this passage. This is one which causes so many problems in the gospel for people when they hear it. If you don't acknowledge that Christ is who he says he is, if you don't acknowledge the God-made flesh, then... You're not in. So many people will tell me that God is a bit like Father Christmas. At the end, everyone gets a present, all get in. But you know, so many struggle with this. Don't we all have friends? Don't we all have family who we want to think of is in heaven? You know, I'm not going to say they're in or they're out because that's not my job. All I know is no one comes to the Father but through Jesus. All I know is God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to die for us, not to condemn the world but to set the world free. I can't cope with the vain, silly arguments of universalism on one end and everyone goes to hell on the other. What I can say is that Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. And that's the strength in which we work. That's the path in which we take up our cross and follow. That's the gospel we preach in our words, in our lives, in our hearts, in our love. That reading today, that gospel reading will cause many people unease. People have always said, how will I know if I'm in? I remember a very wise Elim minister once turning around when someone said, how will I know if I've, com if I've done, if I've committed the unforgivable sin? He said, it's easy, you won't care anymore. As much as you care, that's a sign that you are walking, that you are trying. As much as we fall, it's a sign that we are human. But Christ has risen to help us overcome the power of sin in our lives because he's broken the penalty of sin. Death is no more and it's powerless. So today, can I just ask you, if you're one of those who thinks everyone gets in, that's great. But where's the imperative for us to evangelize and for those who think no one gets in what's the point of the cross we fall we fail we are forgiven nothing you've seen nothing you've been nothing you've done nothing you're going to do neither height nor depth nor power nor principality nothing future present or past nothing you've done and nothing has anyone done to you separates you from God's love. Don't worry about who's in and who's out. Worry about who went to the cross and preached his gospel of love, reconciliation and inclusivity. And heaven? Well, you might be surprised who's there. Who knows, I might even be. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that in flesh you went to the cross in flesh you submitted and died. In flesh you rose again. Help us to put aside foolish arguments. Help us to put aside clever theologies and philosophies. And help us to take that which is folly to the world. 
for the man, born of a virgin, holy God, goes to a cross, dies and rises again. Lord, if we can answer those two things alone, that's a start. But we live by faith. We live by hope made real in Christ. Make that our reality this and every day we pray. Amen. So let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Father God, we come before you this morning aware of our own need of your grace, our own need of the sacrifice of your Son, and ever thankful, Lord, that he gave his life for us so we can have eternal life with you. Lord, we pray this morning for those who have not yet received that message, for those who don't know the great love that came to us in Jesus, that died for us, and that through your power was raised again to life, so that we can have the hope of resurrection, of life after death. Mm. But more than that, Lord, we can have the knowledge, the certainty of your presence with us in this life. Helping us, comforting us, strengthening us, teaching and guiding us. Lord, we pray for those we know, for our loved ones, for our neighbours, for our communities, for the work of your church in spreading that message of love and joy and forgiveness, that we would take it seriously, that we would do it with great joy, that our message would be seen as something to be welcomed and received. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for a world that is desperately in need of that love, of a sense of hope, for the many places in this world where there is conflict, for the tensions rising now between Japan and its neighbours as Japan wants to re release water from Fukushima into the ocean. And as Japan prepares for the Olympics for coronavirus cases increase and so that global activity now comes into question again. Father, we know from our own experience in this country the investment, the heavy investment of money and time that goes into preparing for these games. Father, we pray for those who make decisions. We pray for those who are involved in this whole situation for your wisdom. Lord, we pray for the United States 
of the violence and the, the protests that are going on there as another young man has been killed by a police officer tearing apart again and revealing again the deep divisions that exist in so many of our societies. Lord, we pray for healing, deep and lasting healing. We pray for a willingness to really grapple with the issues at the heart of these protests, of the hurt and the pain that is caused when people are treated differently just because they look different. Lord, we pray for a day when all people of the world will be seen and known and valued as made in your image. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our own country, for our own community, for our own local council as we approach council elections, that as we go to vote we would do it in good conscience, that we would do the research and we would vote for the people who would best represent us and our values as we represent you and your values. Father, with all the wrangling going on around David Cameron and lobbying. Father, we pray that there would be transparency and integrity in our politicians and in our politics. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who are ill at the moment. We pray for more in chambers. And we lift to you, Lord, those we know who are suffering right now with colds, with flu, with minor illnesses and with long-term disabilities, long-term pain, long-term conditions that affect their lives and the way that they live. Lord, we pray for healing, we pray for peace, we pray for strength to endure. Father, we pray for those who are living with terminal diagnosis, for Maureen Williams, for Jane Hatton, and for others known to us. And in the quietness now, Lord, we lift to you all who are in our hearts, in our minds, known to us. We bring them to you, our Heavenly Father, in confidence that you know their needs and you are willing and able to provide. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, as our royal family prepare for the funeral of Prince Philip and the country perhaps prepares itself to. But the family relationships within that family are splattered all over our tabloids. Lord, we pray for them at this time of mourning and grief when even now their lives are intruded upon. Father, we pray that you would surround them and protect them, and particularly the Queen at this time. And Lord, we pray for all who are mourning, all who are preparing funerals, all who are marking anniversaries of significant moments. 
or who just have that moment of missing someone who isn't here anymore. Father, we pray for your comfort. And Lord, we pray that they may be reassured in the death and resurrection of your son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we gather our prayers and lift to you those spoken and unspoken. And we ask, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. So peace with you guys who are here. All the bits and pieces. And peace with you, whatever it is you want, that would do. Have a good day, be safe, and remember that God is with us. And because we know that, we have the confidence and the ability to come before him now. And we can say, the Lord is here. His, His spirit, spirit is with us. So lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give thanks, thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resounds with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord, 
for great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. With all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And so as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one flesh. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord God, our Father, through our Saviour, Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. 
deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And together we say, Almighty Amen. God, <coughs> we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give to you peace, joy and love in your faith and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love now and always. Amen. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Anything we can do to help to be there for you, to stand with you, don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks for being with us today and we'll catch you soon. And for those of the St Francis Persuasion, Monday 7.30, it's the annual district church meeting. That's come round quick. It's going to be streamed, but there's space in the building for those who want to be in the <coughs> building safely. Have a good day. Stay blessed. Bye. Thanks for being with us.